Hey everyone, it's Steve. Hope you're all doing well. In this video, I'll be welding a head tube bracket onto the test frame. And uh, while that's going on, some of you asked more, you asked for more, about why we left California and why we chose South Dakota. I don't know if I can get through like all the reasons in this video, but I'll at least get the conversation started. So as I uh, said, I was asked to embellish a little more about why we moved and um, I was conflicted because uh, you can't talk about anything anymore without it turning political. But then I thought, forget about it. Uh, I should probably get to the point. So since the events of the last four years, it became pretty apparent to me that my values are pretty different from the folks around me, you know, the folks around me in the Bay Area. Now this is not a reason to move and of course that's not why we moved. Uh, to be clear, we all have different values. Like that's just, we're all different, right? So I don't mind uh, a mutual open-minded conversation about values. There's nothing wrong with that. This is how we come to understand each other better. But this is a deeply personal conversation. Uh, if you think about it, we're talking about the code we each live by. And that that's something uh, a company or state or you know, a company or a state, they don't have any business demanding this of us, you know, putting values onto us. It's none of their freaking business. So what value is I choose? Those values are my God-given right. And they're your right as well, your values. What I won't tolerate is when another person's values are being pushed onto me and my own values are disregarded in that process. And in a way where the pressure is so strong, enough that I feel I need to self-censor or behave a certain way, and perhaps this pressure is so strong that if I don't fall in line with these values, I might maybe lose my job or be shunned by other coworkers if they were to find out. So if you haven't already guessed, I did experience these pressures in the workplace and I'm not just talking about the typical corporate stuff. I'm talking about the stuff that you've read and heard about in articles. These things are real and I know because I lived it. It was in meetings where we had to introduce ourselves with pronouns and people had their pronouns in their company chat bios. And uh, it wasn't always this way. When I started working at the company, one of, uh, none of this stuff existed. It all happened in the span of like a couple years. And it happened when we grew in size and the workforce more than doubled. So all these new people came in and then suddenly things just started changing. I once got yelled at by another employee because I accidentally used the wrong pronoun. And I'll refer to anyone by whatever pronoun they would like, but it has to be through mutual understanding and respect. Don't demand it of me. When Roe v. Wade was overturned, the company CEO sent out a mass email to every employee and it was about how he didn't agree with the decision and how they would offer travel benefits if an employee needed to go outside of state. And I remember thinking, why is a corporate company getting involved with this stuff? So these things kept adding up and it got to the point where I just had enough. So when we finally decided to move to South Dakota, I knew I might lose my job over it and I didn't care. All right, so I'm gonna weld here, here, here and here and the same on the bracket on the other side and I'm welding this bracket on because what I'll do is cut this off later and the bracket will serve as kind of a, a fixture and I was originally going to use 035 ER70 S2 but the gap here is it's a pretty big gap it's a thick material 
So I'm going to use um, the R70S2045. I'm using 2% lanthanated tungsten and I'm going to pulse. I don't work for them anymore. They put me on the layoff list when I told them I was moving. And I'm happy things worked out this way. Uh, the more time that passes where I'm not in that office, the more I realize it's not for me. And I feel blessed to have finally set myself free from it. In fact, I would never have talked to you guys about this stuff if I was still working there. Okay guys, I gotta wrap this up because I actually ran out of footage and I had a lot more um, notes about things that happened in California. I have many more stories, a lot of some of them anecdotal, but I, I can't, I don't have the time here, so I gotta wrap it up. So the last thing I'll say about why we landed in South Dakota is uh, when stuff went down um, and people were, were locked down because of the C word, uh, South Dakota did not lock down. This was a big factor in why we wanted to move here, uh, at first anyway. But then after we got here and after we had our visit, uh, the people here are nice people. They're perfectly normal. They're not any rumors that other people might think of a state that's, let's face it, they're pretty um, right in their politics. But they never talk about that stuff. I haven't had a single conversation with anyone about politics here and about their values. And, and nobody comes out and uh, expects to, dis no, no one displays their values out in the open. It's just not a thing you need to talk about here. Instead, uh, the people here, they just they have common decency for each other and that's all I ask of any place I live and so that's the big reason why we ended up here alright guys I got these tacked on here these are more like tacks rather than actual welds I would wanted to just get this tacked in four spots on both sides just to hold the plate and so that it, it wouldn't distort uh, any further I didn't want to put too much heat into it so I tried to get filler in here and what was happening is uh, whenever you pulse uh, the rod can ball up and uh, there were a few places where the rod ball balled up. I didn't get any filler onto the actual joint. So what I ended up doing was just fusion welding the plate onto the, the frame, which is not great. So I took the cranks off so it would be easier to weld. It was, it was very bulky. Uh, if you take a look at this, look, this is not even a tube and you can see there's a, there's like a gap there. It's not even welded on there properly. So this was just sitting there to hold the kickstand on and you can see they really pinched the chainstay here. <laughs> and this is the cheapest frame ever. If you look at these dropouts, look how thin they are. Super, super thin. 2.6 mil. So same situation with the seat stay tube. It's not even an actual tube. It's a, I don't even know what you call this, uh, a rolled tube and it's not welded. So typically uh, bike tubes are 035. And this looks more like, of course, the cheaper the bicycle, the, uh, the thicker the tubes get. And so this looks like an 06, these tubes, which is good because if you're hacking around on a bike a lot, you, you want a little more material so you're not blowing holes through. Um, and of course, cheap bikes, they're not going to have butted ends. And a butted end means that at the ends where they're welded, they would, the thickness of the tube gets, uh, well, the wall of the tube gets thicker. And then it gets thinner toward the center uh, for weight. But in this case, this is the cheapest frame ever, so it's probably 06 everywhere. I want to show you guys a very tricky area. So this is a pretty deep channel. And uh, in order to get in there, I had to uh, stick my tungsten out pretty far, as you can see. And so you're going to hear comments from people. They'll say, you never should stick your tungsten out this far. And I'm here to tell you that um, Sometimes you got to do it. 
and if it works and it's not sparking especially in a channel like this because this essentially is shielding the argon from escaping um, then then by all means do it and in this case I had to do it there was no way to get down in there so there's no way to get down in there without the that much stick out so in some of my older videos you'll see that I've welded seat stays and in many cases the seat stays require the tungsten to stick out this far so don't be shy if you gotta get in there you gotta stick it out then stick it out and if it sparks then uh, you got a problem if it doesn't then you're good Here's where I landed on those welds and uh, inside the crevice not my best work but believe me I can do a lot worse <laughs> And here we are on the bottom side. You can see it got really hot in here, but it'll be all right. Okay guys, that's all for this video. I hope it didn't get too heavy for you, but hopefully it gave you a little perspective on my motivations for moving and maybe it'll help some people in their decisions, uh, wherever you may be living or whatever pressures you're going through. Just know that the, they don't have power over you. And with that, keep your head up, stay humble, and I'll see you guys in the next one.